Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen, and in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Hello, Pastor Sam here, and welcome to Miracles Still Happen. Thank you for joining me on the program today. I believe God has something special in store for you, so please stay tuned. Recently, I spoke on the subject, Jesus is still the answer. Over the many years that I've preached the gospel, I'm glad to tell you Jesus is still the answer. He's still God's fullness meant for our emptiness. He is the answer to all of life's perplexing questions. Things are changing around us, but Jesus doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's why today I'd love to send to you my book, absolutely free, I wrote, called Changeless Truths for Changing Times. I want to send it to you if you'll call me, 804-744-8881. That's 804-744-8881. doesn't cost you a dime, but I want you to have it, and I'll put it in your hands right away. would ask that you'd share it with somebody else when you've read it, Changeless truths for changing times, and Jesus is still the answer. You know, here in our area, uh, we've discovered that there are people that are really struggling in this economy, and unfortunately, many of them are children. That's why in October, we're doing what we call Operation Love. On the 7th and 8th of October, we'll be in full swing in the inner city of Richmond, Virginia, and we're going to be offering haircuts, bike repair, uh, medical attention. We're going to give a week's supply of groceries. We're going to give uh, clothes away uh, to needy people. A lot of things we're going to be doing, and we're going to have uh, an opportunity there for people to come to know Jesus. But along with that, to attract people, we're going to have all of our inflatables set up, the rock climbing wall, bounce house, all those things that children love, plus horseback rides and, and games and prizes. We're setting up a big tent in the middle of all of this where we can preach the gospel. So I want you to pray for us, if you will. And for more information, you can call us at uh, 804-744-8881. Maybe you'll want to know how you can get involved. Here's something else exciting happening in the month of October, and that is what we call our family uh, conference. Now, the reason we call that is we call it that is because we actually are having something for every member of the family. It starts on Wednesday night with a big kids' fest blowout, and pastors Jeremy Cromwell and Frank Williams will be heading that up. But then on Thursday night, I'm speaking. On Friday night, Karen Wheaton will be with us and the Tuttle sisters from Cleveland, Tennessee. And then we're going to have a great time on Sunday morning with Pastor Joey Rogers. And by the way, uh, Pastor Joey, who pastors that great church down in Pace Assembly uh, in Pace, Florida, is bringing up what uh, they call uh, the way of the people of the cross, people of the cross. And, and what it is, it's a converted 18-wheeler, and uh, inside, it's like a museum. It, it tells you the story of the persecuted church around the world. So that will be here in our parking lot. It's just going to be a powerful, powerful week starting on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. Again, for more information, you can call us at 804-744-8881, or you can go to our website. That's victorytab.org. Well, let's get ready to go into that service, and I'm speaking on the subject, Jesus is still the answer. In John chapter 1, and verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. Isn't it interesting that after you've read about all the names of God in the Old Testament, in Psalm 138 and 2 it says, He has magnified His Word above all His name. So John picked up on that. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He sang before the earth was without form and void. He 
inhabited eternity. He's saying he was the true light of eternity before the command went forth, let there be light. He was the ancient of days before the evening and the morning were the first day. He was the bright and morning star, infinite ages before the morning's stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. He was the rock of ages before the mountain tops raised their rocky peaks and clapped their hands with glee. He was the water of life before the firmament was made to divide the waters. He was the bread of life before the earth brought forth its first golden grain. And all that we need and everything that we need and whatever we need is spelled capital J-E-S-U-S, Jesus. Somebody shout his name. Somebody shout his name. If you love him, shout his name. If you're born again, shout his name. If he has ever healed your body, shout his name. If he has ever made a way for you where there seemed to be no way, somebody shout his name. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is in this world of ours a heart's cry. There is a desire to find an answer to life's perplexing questions. Last year, 15 million people starved to death in third world countries. As I speak to you this morning, little babies are dying in their mother's arms because one out of three children in those countries will die before they reach the age of three. What is the greatest need in our world? Is it food for starving multitudes? Here in America, and how many of you know America has been blessed as no other nation? But in America, as many as three million people are living on the streets. One of the things that amazed me about our own community is that when we would go into the schools to minister to the children and to their families, every principal that we met said the same thing. We have children that are attending this school who live in the car with their family. They don't even have a house to live in right here in America. So what's the greatest need that we have? Is it a shelter for the homeless? Back in 1981, AIDS was first discovered. But today in our country alone, millions of people are walking the streets, carrying in their body a death sentence called AIDS. What is the greatest need? Is it a cure for AIDS? Since 1973, when we as a nation decided to legalize abortion on demand through all nine months of pregnancy, we have succeeded in murdering millions of babies in some of the most horrible ways imaginable. What is the greatest need that we have in this country? Is it to stop abortion? Recently, a survey of young people between the ages of 12 and 18 revealed that one out of every eight had attempted suicide. 23 million people, the experts tell us, are walking the streets of American cities and they are severely depressed. What is the greatest need 
of the hour. It is my belief that the greatest need of this hour is not a thing, but a person. His name is Jesus, for he shall save us from our sins. Come on, somebody. I want you to turn with me to Psalm 23, because believe it or not, this Psalm is all about Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I uh, went to a Sunday school class one time, and little, little children, even preschool age, could quote Psalm 23. Because I asked them, I said, what is your favorite passage of Scripture? And the consensus was Psalm 23. I said, is there anybody here that can quote Psalm 23? And one little beautiful blue-eyed girl stood up, put her hands on her hips. She's five years old. And she started out like this. She says, the Lord is my shepherd and he's all I want. I said, you go, girl. The Lord is my shepherd, David said. He's all I need. He's everything I need. And I believe he could have said, he's all I want. He said, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. I shall not want for rest. This is a troubled world. Everywhere you look, it's chaos and confusion. And in the midst of it, the Lord said, I'm going to cause you to be able to lie down and to rest. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, because he leadeth me beside the stilled waters. Now, what he's saying is, I shall not want for refreshment. How many of you have found yourselves in a situation where you felt like you were dry and parched and you could get into the presence of the Lord and he would refresh your soul? Anybody know what I'm talking about? The Lord is my shepherd and he restores my soul. I have a news bulletin. It didn't come from Fox. It didn't come from CNN. It came right out of the word of God and here it is, failure is never final with the child of God. And somebody this morning came here to be restored. Somebody shout amen. I shall not want for guidance because he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The Bible says, and these are the words of Jesus. He said, when I put my sheep out, I go before them and I call them by name. Think about this. The Lord knows your name. Oh, you know his name, but he knows your name. So when he puts you out, he says, come on, Ray. Come on, this is the way to go. Come on, Charles. This is how we do it. Come on, follow me. Every time I put up my, I pick up my foot, you put your foot right down in my footprint and you follow me. And come on, Pastor Eric. And come on, Pastor Shannon. And come on, Pastor Rick. And come on, Harold. And he'll call you by your name. The, the devil will call you by your sin. He'll say, come on, you adulterer. Come on over here, you fornicator. Come on over here, you drug abuser. Come over here, you thief. Come over here, you liar, you liar. He doesn't even know your name. But when the Lord looks at you, he sees you washed in his blood and he says, I know your name and you're a special treasure to me and I'm calling you by your name. Come on over here and follow me. Somebody say praise the Lord. And then he says, yea, uh, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. What does God do for you? When you are fearful, God will give you courage. He'll give you a spine. He'll give you a backbone. He'll give you holy boldness. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Hallelujah. I shall not want for courage. I shall not want for comfort, for thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, how could you be comforted by a rod or a staff? Do you know what that is? That's a walking stick. That's all that is. Let me show you what I'm talking about. 
Let's let this be a staff. Every shepherd had one. Now, sometimes what they would do, Sister Booth, is like if a, if a sheep got off somewhere and, and got in trouble and the shepherd couldn't reach him with his hand, he could use that staff. There was a crook in the staff and he could reach down there and pull them out with it. And, and, and so when a sheep saw that the shepherd had the staff in his hand, in his mind, he'd say, well, if I ever get in trouble, I know he'll get me out of trouble. Yeah. Amen. And, 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 and sometimes, though, what he did is he used it as a weapon. Uh -huh. See? And sometimes there would be a wolf out there somewhere. And the sheep would hear the sound of that wolf and their eyes would turn toward the shepherd. And if they saw the shepherd was on watch with his staff, they weren't worried. They looked first for the shepherd. What do you do when you hear the enemy prowling around? Do you push the panic button? Do you go into a tailspin? Or do you look for the shepherd? They might be eating grass. And all of a sudden they hear roar and they don't look in the direction of the line. They look in the direction of the shepherd. And as long as the shepherd is standing by with the rod, they're not worried. You know what he would do? Sometimes he would intentionally wait. Some of you have wondered why in the world hasn't the Lord showed up yet? He's waiting. He's waiting. And he has a plan in mind. And as soon as the enemy gets in striking distance, just before he gets to you, the shepherd steps between you and your enemy. Watch out now. And what does he do with his rod? He brings it down across the back of your enemy and breaks his back. And he picks you up in his arms and takes you back to the safety of the fold. I shall not want for protection. How do you know that the shepherd's on guard? Because he said, I neither sleep nor slumber. How do you know he's close by? Because he said, I will not leave you and I will not forsake you. Somebody ought to praise God right there. That's a good place to shout just a little bit. Amen. Now watch this. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Right in the middle of your enemies, God will set up a banquet table and tell you to put your number 10s under that table and eat until you are full and running over. Come on, somebody. And then I shall not want because... He anoints my head with oil. Oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. He promised me power, power. Do you know what kind of power you got? You've got Holy Ghost power. You know what it's called in scripture? Dunamis. It means divine enablement. It's the word from which uh, we have derived the word dynamite. Tell somebody, I got Holy Ghost dynamite. Now, granted, some of you, your fuse is wet. But you still got the dynamite. Today, when you leave, for your convenience, we have a police officer. And he'll stop traffic so you can get out. So don't backslide. We're going to get you out of here. Somebody said, oh, I don't want to get in another traffic jam. My road rage will kick in. Well, when you get out there, you'll see that the police officer will stand in traffic and hold up his hand. Now, don't you try to do that because if you try to do it, there'll be nothing more than a greasy spot in the road. You know why? Because you don't have the authority to do it. Now, that word in scripture is also translated power and it's not the word dunamis, but it's another word that simply means authority. And that's where we get the word that's found in John 1, 11 and 12. He gave to those who believe on his name the right or the authority 
to be sons of God. So you have the right to call yourself a son of God. And that's what the badge is. The badge is that power or authority that says I'm backed up by the government of Chesterfield, the, the, the municipality. And they have uh, uh, given to me and vested in me this authority that I can stand in the middle of the road and hold up my hand. So if you can't see the badge here, he's got another one on his hat. He's got a uniform. It tells you he is an officer of the law and you must stop when he raises his hand. But suppose you're one of those people that has no regard for the law and you say, I'm in a hurry and I can't wait. The fried chicken is calling my name down at KFC. I've got to get down there and turn left and go to KFC. And I can't wait for these church folk to get out. If I do, they'll get ahead of me and I'll have to stand in line and wait on them. I've got to beat them. And the man says, I'm not going to stop. Well, when the police officer sees that you did not recognize his authority, he did not stop and say, I guess I'll have to get out of the road. Because even though he's got authority, oh, I'm preaching better than you're letting on. He said, I got something else. It's a nine millimeter. And that's my dunamis. And if you won't stop for my authority, pow, 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 I'll stop you with my dunamis. Woo! I'm getting ready to shout over something you don't even know what I'm talking about. I have authority. I am who God says I am. I am a child of God. But suppose, just suppose, old Slewfoot decides that he won't recognize my authority. That's all right. I got some Holy Ghost dynamite. I got a nine millimeter. I got a 357 Magnum. Kaboom, devil. You take that because I got more power than you do in Jesus' name. Woo! Man, if I had time, I'd stop and shout over that. That's deep right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> I ain't never heard nobody preach on a police officer this morning. <laughs> he said, I've got the anointing, so I've got power over the devil. Then he said, my cup runs over. You know what that means? I've got joy. Some of you look like you were called for and you couldn't get here, and you got here and found out you weren't needed. You act like you just came from your best friend's funeral, and you came here to oh, this is a sacred place. I can't be happy in this place because this is the sanctuary. Yes, the sanctuary, not the mortuary. Yeah. Ain't nobody dead up in here, amen. Ain't even nobody mad but the devil. And there's some folks, that, not victory, but there's some folks that go to church and they're so afraid they're going to make some noise and offend somebody. They're so afraid. You know why they're afraid to clap their hands? They're afraid they're going to wake up the person next to them. We're not a dead, dry church. We're an on fire church because our Jesus is alive. Hey, and I believe that he inhabits the praises of his people and he's been watching us and longing and yearning for us to open up in praise and I want you right now, if you love the Lord, to make some crazy praise in this place. Woo, hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Jesus.